How the hell did you manage to open the trunk? Well, all you have to do is disengage the childproof lock. But the only thing in there was this weird stick. That's my father's divining rod. You think so? Legend has it that it always brought him luck. He found the water vein Kuvak's built on with this very rod. Yeah? Well, if my father really always had that much luck, then why didn't he manage to take me along when he left Deponia? Eh, uh, I haven't the slightest idea. Later. Exactly. Hey, that's my dad's divining rod. Don't even think about it, Rufus. It's mine now. But it's a family heirloom. So? A gift is a gift. Boy, I can hardly wait to give it a try. Maybe I can find a well somewhere near. And once I'm rich... We'll split 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> I might lend you the rod for a couple of hours. He's bloated, he's useless, and he has a sponge in his kitchen. I don't want to waste all of my explosive mojo at once. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not throwing in the sponge yet. If my impeccable sense of orientation doesn't fail me, I should be under the shower right now. Work. Yeah, right. She's just sitting there twiddling her thumbs. I can do that, too. Looks like Tony's in her store. If I go in now, her taunting remarks will shower down on me like a hailstorm. Ah, uh, well, what the heck. Let's get this over with. Well, well, well. Look who's back. If it isn't Evil Knievel, the man who defied gravity, the conqueror of the sky, the wind jockey, the traveler on his way to the upper spheres, and yet, here he stands, right in front of me. Who'd have thought? Believe it or not, this time I really made it. I was on board an Organon cruiser. Its destination, Elysium. And then the longing for me became too much to bear. I had to choose a life of eternal bliss, which means far away from you, or saving a beautiful Elysian girl from a horrible death. <laughs> yeah, right. Rufus is doing a selfless deed. I would love to laugh, but my belly's still aching from when you were dragged through the junk. How's business? Like, uh, when did that interest you ever? Who says I take an interest? I'm just being extremely polite. <laughs> First and foremost, you have an extremely distorted view of yourself. Well, that's because my reflection in the mirror is so blindingly bright. Oh! <laughs> Why so cranky? Why? You have destroyed my mailbox, devastated my backyard, gobbled down all my food supplies, and if I find out that the disappearance of my favorite pair of boots is connected in any way to the construction of your ridiculous escape pod, may God have mercy on your soul. I had to carry the black powder in some kind of vessel, didn't I? What? Uh, nothing. I'd like to buy something. With what? Or did you get a job recently that I don't know anything about? Well, I'll pay you back. Really? Oh! I wanted to say goodbye before I leave this dump. New escape plans, have we? You are deluded. You'll never get out of here. Never, ever, ever. And that means I'll have you on my back for the rest of my life.
What are those vouchers? They're gift vouchers. You hand them in at the post office, and they deliver the merchandise. Cool. I'll take them. Hey, hands off! What? They don't come free. I thought they were gift vouchers. Oh! What was that again about the gift vouchers? They're gift vouchers. You hand them in at the and no, you can't have them as a gift. Then why are they called gift vouchers? The first aid cabinet is locked. What? Did you injure yourself again? Not yet. Too bad. You know what? Tell me when you have. I'll have a good long laugh, and then I'll give you the key. I've got to go. <sighs> I've been saying that for years, but here you still are. Weights, anchors, metal boots, hooks—all the things you need if you want to stay moored forever. There isn't even one crumb left. Seems like I have to find my own ingredients. This is where Tony's budgie cage used to hang, but he couldn't cope with her, so he skedaddled. He died of old age. Yeah, whatever you say. After you accidentally infected him with progeria. Yeah, you, you know I like my version better. Please form a line, people. Draw a waiting. <coughs> oh, draw a waiting number, and the mayor will see you in a short while. What's going on here? Did someone refill the peanut jar? A girl fell from the sky. They say she's a real beauty. The mayor is about to decide who's going to give her shelter. Yeah. Well, I doubt he'll have a hard time to decide once he's heard my story. I saved that girl from the dark exchequer. I am responsible for her. Nice try, buddy. But I've made up a good story too. Mine even has a dragon in it. So move to the back of the line and draw a number like everyone else. Those notice boards are great. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I'd still have to search for magnets in the trash heaps. I hate lines. Hardly ever saw such stupid hats. The mayor wants to decide what? Who will what? Give her shelter? Lotek thinks the girl should be um, integrated into our community. And someone has to nurse her back to health. I hope the mayor will choose me. She could give me a hand in the mud pits. Ever since I cut my fingertips while scrubbing rust, I tend to get infected cuticles. You want her to scrub rust for you? That's outrageous. Why? What do you want the girl for? Rufus? Rufus. Huh? Oh, what? The girl belongs to me. That'll be determined by the mayor. Well, how do I get to the mayor? That's easy. Take a number and stand at the end of the line. Couldn't you let me cut in? See, I'm in a bit of a hurry, and I see. Well, if that's the case, do you want my chair? Shall we get you something to drink while you're waiting? We could bake a cake for you too. Really? I like cactus cake, but no raisins. Thanks very much. And, oh, I see. Crap. Now I'm hungry. Where's the girl now? She's lying in the assembly hall. Doctor Gizmo is with her. They say she's unconscious. I hope she isn't injured. So do I. 
So do I. It's not easy stacking exhaust pipes with broken arms. Nice hats. Did I miss a trend or something? The roofer switched to making hats, because it hasn't rained for months. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and I'm sure the trousers are from the guy who used to make tarps, right? <laughs> hey, my wife made them for me. Well, thanks for nothing. No, really, let me go first. Listen, Rufus, a minute ago that was a nice little joke, but now it's half annoying. And half sad. I'll skedaddle.